Hello and welcome to this video on iNav. Now there are a couple of things in iNav that are incredibly powerful and relatively new. One of them only kind of snuck in in iNav 2.3, but they're not very well understood, but they could unlock an awful lot of potential to be able to dynamically do things automatically as part of a flight or in re result of a control input from the radio. And I'm talking about two things. One called logical conditions. Now logical conditions has been around in iNow for quite a long time. It's kind of been hidden down here at the bottom of this page and it's this little, little button and you can very quickly overlook that but if you click it then up comes this extra little bit here and there's all this stuff and you can actually set up what are essentially logical switches, the same kind of logical switches that we know and love and I use all the time in stuff like OpenTX to detect when certain things are happening. And when those logical switches or logic conditions, as they're called in iNav, are turned on and off, then you can use the next thing to make things happen. And that next thing is something called global functions. Now, global functions is a bit of an odd name for it, but global functions allow you to change an awful lot of things in flight. And together, they can allow you to do some pretty cool stuff. And I'm going to show you a basic example of that and explain a little bit more about what logic conditions and global functions are, because most people I spoke to have never even heard of them. Now, before I get too far into this, I need to say a huge thank you to one of the iNav developers who's helped me get my head around this. And this is Pavel Spakowski. Now, Pavel is one of the leading iNav developers and has his own channel. I'm going to put a link in the description down below. If you like iNav and like what's going on with iNav, then please check out his channel. He's creating content all the time that's talking about some of the new features. And being one of the developers actually creating the code, he has a really detailed understanding of how it all works behind the scenes. So again, before I carry on, massive thank you to Pavel and the time he spent with me to help me get my head around this. Because to be honest, with the documentation that currently exists in the iNav wiki, and that's kind of normal, these things are introduced and then the documentation has to cash up. Um, I just couldn't make it work. So at the moment, logical conditions in iNav, think of them like logical switches, are relatively basic. They can only uh, test very simple logic conditions and not or uh, on a number of things. And that's things like RC channel values, which is what we're going to use in the example in a moment. And then you've got some slightly more sophisticated ones, things like flight parameters and even things like active flight modes. So there is a number of things that you can test, but it's quite binary at the moment. But logical conditions is a feature that's going to be further enhanced and I hope they add more because there's a total of 16. But once you have several things set up, maybe, I don't know, you want to set them up to dynamically change your VTX power. You want to automatically drop flaps in certain positions below certain airspeeds. Once you've started to set those things up, you'll run out of it very quickly. Now, iNav checks these logical conditions 10 times every second to see whether or not they are true or not. And if they are, then it will kind of essentially turn that logical condition on, like almost like a little physical switch being flicked in iNav, and then that switch can do stuff. And the bit that actually does the stuff is this stuff called global functions. And that's the bit that can either be turned on or off by one of the logical switches being flicked. So a logical condition detects whether something's happened, and then you tell the global function what you want to do with it. And there's loads of options. And have a look at the global function page. Again, hopefully once you've watched this video, if you go and look at the wiki, it will make a little bit more sense. But you can change loads of different stuff. In this example that I'm going to give here, we will use the switch position, the logical conditions position, those three positions, to change the VTX power on the video transmitter. So now that we have the radio set up, we can start to do some of the smart stuff. Now, everything else from here on in is going to be in iNav. And what we're going to do is make that three position switch, change the VTX power level on the video transmitter in the model. A couple of things to think about before we get too far into this. There's actually four power levels that you can change to using something like Smart Audio. And there's five levels for Tramp. And those levels are 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's your four for uh, smart audio and it's zero one two three four if it is for tramp now what we're going to do is basically set it the inav stuff up so that one of those power values is sent to the vtx now the way it works is that the the mapping of the power values uh, isn't the same for every video transmitter 
So the way I would recommend doing it is go, before you do get too far into this, go into the iNav on-screen display, go and change each individual power setting and turn on in the on-screen display in iNav the VTX band and power setting. Pop that somewhere where you can see it and then write down the number that corresponds to the power levels on your video transmitter. Now on mine, 25 milliwatts equates to zero, uh, 100 milliwatts equates to power level one, 200 to power level two, and I think it's 600 to power level three. So that's the numbers that I need to remember because those numbers are the ones that I put, need to put in, zero, one, two, and three that correspond to my power levels. Now I know that, then we can use logical conditions and global functions to set those using the switch that I've just set up. A couple of things to be aware of about global functions. Uh, they're not persistent. They do overwrite the default positions, but when you change things and you power cycle the system, um, it will not save them. So maybe you want to set it so that the system always comes up at 25 milliwatts um, and then you can change it afterwards. If you want to change those default settings, then you can change stuff in EEPROM. Uh, see the iNav wiki and the stick commands for how you save information down to EEPROM. Be aware that some video transmitters will handle power changes more gracefully than others. Some will just give you a little burst of static and you'll be able to see beautifully again. Some of them behave in a rather odd way. Test yours on the bench when you've done this so that the first time you try this in the field, it doesn't take your VTX image away from your goggles so your FPV image doesn't disappear. And lastly, be cautious of heat. Uh, this is a really nice idea that you could start off in 25 milliwatts, keep the power setting relatively low, keep the VTX nice and cool while you're sat waiting for everything, the GPS to lock up and all that goodness. And then when you start flying, uh, once the airflow is flowing over the VTX, you could potentially then increase the power if it's legal to do so in your country. So job one is we have to set up the logical conditions to connect the three positions of the switch on channel seven that we've just done with the logical condition. So in the low position, the logical condition zero, which is the first one because it's numbers from zero, is going to detect when channel seven is in the low position. Now there's lots of things that we could set up and we could test in here, but again, this is the basic version. And the middle position is going to be mid and surprise, surprise, the high operator is going to be used to test when channel seven is in the high position. Now what that means now is as channel seven moves on the radio, those logical conditions are going to be activated for all three positions. And now we've got those, then we can use the global functions to actually use those soft switches inside iNav to send the different VTX power levels to the video transmitter. Now there isn't any nice graphical interface with the global functions in iNav at the moment. So unfortunately we're in CLI mode here. The manual as well, and hopefully after watching this video, it's going to make a little bit more sense, is laid out like this. So you uh, go into the CLI, you type GF for global functions, you then the rule number, whether or not it's enabled, that's a zero or one, the logic condition that you've set it up for, and we've just did that, we set up logic condition zero, one, and two, the action, the operand type, the operand value, and the flags. So the three commands that I'm about to put in are by the side of me here on the slide. And they are set so that each of them is going to set one of the power levels. So for example, the first one says global function zero, because the numbering starts from zero. So it's the first rule, so rule zero. Uh, the next one is one, which means it's activated. Uh, logic condition is zero, which is the first logic condition we set up, which is the switch uh, channel seven in the low position. And three means we're gonna set the video transmitter power and then the operand value is zero, i.e. we're going to send set it to zero. And again, that's what we figured out in the on-screen display. For me, zero is 25 milliwatts. So in the low position for my channel seven switch, it's going to tell the VTX to be 25 milliwatts. And the other two are going to set different rules for logical conditions one and two for power levels two and three. So let me just show you how I'm going to set this up in the CLI within iNav. So the first thing we need to do is go into the CLI and just type GF and hit enter. 
and then there they all are and everything's zero because nothing is set in here at all. Again, you need inav 2.3 or later, otherwise the gf command won't do anything. So let's cut and paste the first one in. Again, this is rule zero activated for logical condition zero. Set the VTX power to power level zero. So there it is at the top level. So that just changes that one. And then I will type in the other two and you'll see them kind of appearing uh, in each of the lines corresponding to whichever global function you're actually setting. Now be careful when you're typing this in, you do need the spaces between all of the numbers and then when you're finished, click save and reboot it. And with that set up, then you can go back to your bench and flip the switches and hopefully see the power level change. Now obviously this is only going to work if you already have everything set up so you can change the power level through the on-screen display in iNav before you start messing around with all this stuff. But hopefully it gives a flavor, just a slight glimpse of how powerful logical conditions and global functions are because we can detect all kinds of things happening on the system with RC channels, flight modes and other stuff with logical conditions and then with global functions we can actually change things dynamically in flight. Now, let me know if this has been interesting and you've kind of learned something uh, because Pavel and I are talking about potentially doing more of these videos because one of the things that I would really like to be able to do is for this to happen dynamically. It's for iNav to be measuring the distance from the home location and as you get further away, it kind of increases the VTX power dynamically but also as you're flying home, it kind of drops the VTX power power dynamically as well to just keep everything nice and cool and not run excessive amounts of power when it doesn't have to. So if you like to see stuff like that then do thumbs up, leave a comment down below and uh, hopefully Pavel and I can do some more stuff together and get some more videos out. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.